tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello, friends. Today I feel depressed. <laughs> you cannot really make me feel depressed with such an amazing tool as Maya, but uh, today I'm uh, slightly frustrated. Uh, not really, but uh, I, I haven't found out one thing, and I just want to share this knowledge with you. This is uh, the animation. And in the timeline down here, you see that it's getting slower and slower. And that's the problem I have. I don't know how to make the particles not live forever. I know how to do this with N particles, but uh, I just didn't find out. I tried it for maybe 15 minutes or so, where in Bifrost Graph you can give them an end ending lifespan. So the more and more particles we have, the slower the machine gets. And when I render the scene, wait and see until the end of this uh, brief tutorial, uh, all of a sudden my just stopped rendering because it was just stepping forward, uh, took maybe two or three hours per frame just to recalculate the <laughs> amount of particles here. Let me stop it here and uh, show you how the geometry is. Uh, in the outliner, we can unhide the helix. That's a, just a standard polygon helix. And when we go to the very beginning, and I go back to the standard camera here. So here I have the Bifrost graph thing, the, the particle emitter, basically. And the particle emitter feels the polygon helix. Why do the particles penetrate the, the geometry? Well, because I made holes in them. Put on the shader. These are the holes I made. And in addition to that, over here. But the, bo the bottom part is sealed. So the particles cannot... Uh, penetrate here. So we have four open spaces here and this one and here you see the object. Let me show you the Bifrost graph now. And for such a complex animation it's amazingly simple. Just know how to set it up. It's easily said. You need to know a, a few things. The polygon cube shape is our particle emitter the first geometry where it starts from is a cube it could be any kind of geometry but i'm starting with a cube and the cube emits those particles so i feed the cube shape the mesh output into the sources input of a simulate particles because i want to make particles this is a pretty f straightforward connection I have geometry, I have a particle simulation system, and I just connect the two of them. Now, um, I connected the polygon helix uh, as well, but into the colliders slot. Very easy. So you just drag and drop both geometries into here and make these connections with the simulate particles tool. How do you find the simulate particles? Well, tap and then type in simulate particles. And you have the particles here. The particles have nothing to do here for you. You cannot manipulate anything. The simulation is a simulation and uh, it does not do other things than simulating and it wants to keep the simulation to itself. That's why you need uh, settings and uh, the particle solver settings. And um, for example, I turned off gravity here. The default is minus 9.8 or plus 9.8 or whatever. So they would t typically fall down. I didn't want them to fall down. And I wanted them to self-collide. But there's nothing about the age here. <sighs> that really puzzles me. If you have a solution, just tell me. Uh, I'll post something in the my area anyway and uh, surely get uh, a competent answer within a few minutes or hours. Then the particles have an output and 
they go into the geometry input of the assign material slot. Because we want a material here which is bluish, which is a little bit shiny, that's all I have. And this is the AI standard surface shader from Arnold, which I just middle mouse dragged in here as well. So this gives me the blue color and this assigns the material to the geometry. If you want to know how the AI standard surface shader is connected, it's connected to the input slot of the assigned material, the input slot surface material, because we're not dealing with a volume material, but with a surface material. And then the whole thing goes into the out geometry input of the output. Sounds strange, but that's the way it goes. The output has an input and uh, out geometry goes into out geometry. Why do we see out points and out particles here? Well, because I tried out other things. So we just can delete that port. So if you want to make a screenshot, just do it and just set these things up. It's very simple. Geometry and geometry. One is the collider. One is the main geometry which evaporates the particles. The particle simulation with particle solver settings where you can turn off the gravity, for example. Then you can leave this out, by the way, and directly connect the particles output here. Then you have only five nodes with this amazing animation and simulation. But in this case, just uh, use the assign material node, feed it feed in uh, an Arnold surface shader here into the surface material slot and then connect the whole thing to the output and you're done. So the animation which you see now is only a couple of seconds and uh, Maya just stopped rendering it. It doesn't didn't crash, it just stopped rendering it. Uh, I don't know why that would be but uh, each frame at the end took I think two hours or so and the whole animation took uh, two days to render. I'm not joking. Have a nice day. Bye.